Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for daily updates for the Comlex board exam preparation. Today's topic is going to be infectious disease and we're going to cover some of the key points in treating and diagnosing some of the high yield topics such as tuberculosis and HIV AIDS. Let's start with HIV AIDS. The diagnostic study here is going to be ELISA for HIV antibodies. Also the western blot is the most specific. And keep in mind that PCR for the viral load is definitely helpful because the viral load is what tells you where the patient is going. Typically if you see high viral loads such as 750,000 or above then that's considered to be a primary infection. Also CD4 counts um, are very important. For CD4 counts what you need to know is that um, they're not a diagnostic test per se but they can help you narrow down your differential and uh, the CD4 count um, is going to basically help you understand any of the complications. Let's talk about um, some of the antiretroviral medications. You have the NRTIs which are Zidovudine, um, Stavudine, Didanazine, Zalcitabine, Abacavir, Lamivudine, all these are going to be your nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Then you have the non-nucleoside um, reverse transcriptase inhibitor, which are nevirapine, efirazine, and delaverdine. So remembering one of this is important. Either remembering, you know, efavirenz, delaverdine navirapine either one of these it's going to be high yield the reason is because patients usually are given a therapy of NNRTI plus two NRTIs so two NRTIs can include zidovudine and also um, known as AZT and uh, didanosine or stavudine so you can remember you know one of these to help you on the boards Keep in mind that these medications do definitely have side effects such as a bone marrow suppression for AZT, um, peripheral neuropathies and pancreatitis for DDI and um, stavudine. And so it's important to you know just understand what medications you're going to be prescribing because the board exam will definitely want you to know at least the names and what class they fall into. Another strategy you can use is use a um, protease inhibitor and these end with the word Navir, N-A-V-I-R. Examples include indinavir, amprenavir, um, etazanavir, all these are you know examples and keep in mind that again these have side effects as well. For example the um, indinavir can cause nephrolithiasis. However in picking your regimen for an HIV patient um, you should keep in mind that NNRTI plus 2RTI or a protease inhibitor plus 2 NRTIs is a regimen that works. And NRTI plus a NNRTI or a PI um, is, you know, a combination that's going to give you wide coverage. And that's what really you're looking for. Um, the other important point is if the treatment ever needs to be interrupted, you have to stop all the antiretrovirals to minimize development of any kind of resistance. And if there is a failed regimen, um, that basically means you're unable to achieve undetectable viral load. Perhaps, you know, uh, if it's less than 10,000. Um, also, an increase in viral load and a decrease in CD4 count or clinical deterioration are all signs of a failing regimen. Indications for the initiation of therapy uh, for the heart protocol includes AIDS or symptomatic HIV, such as thrush or unexplained fever, asymptomatic plus high viral loads, or a low CD4 count, such as 200 to 350 and definitively you know, less than 200. Now, what about the prophylaxis? Well, patients can receive um, you know, 
a prophylaxis for tuberculosis if they have a positive PPD or a high risk exposure and you can give them INH plus vitamin B6 for nine months. If their CD4 count drops below 200, a PCP prophylaxis with TMPSMX is recommended or DAPSO 100 milligrams QD. If their CD4 counts less than 100 and a positive toxoplasma serology comes back, you're going to be using toxoplasmosis and a TMPSMX or Dapsone again um, are the key medications. With CD4 counts less than 50, you're looking at MAC, MAC. And in this case, azithromycin is the key medication. You want to stop primary prophylaxis if the CD4 count is greater than the initiation threshold um, or the patient has been on three to six months of heart therapy. Now, there's several complications of HIV that you want to understand for the board exam, such as the CD4 counts, and if they drop below 50, or if they're you know in the range of 50 to 100, you're thinking of CMV or MAC, also invasive aspergillosis and bacillary angiomatosis um, are other complications that can develop. With CD4 counts less than 200, PCP, Toxoplasma, Bartonella, Cryptococcus, all these are complications you should keep in mind. And again, with CD4 counts less than 500, seborrheic dermatitis, oral hairy leukoplakia, Kaposi's sarcoma, all of these are, you know, some of the high yield complications. What happens in patients who have a fever um, you have to work them up for any kind of an infection. So you want to look for the CD4 count, get a CBC, chemistries, check the LFTs, UA, chest x-ray. All these are important. Also ordering urinary um, cryptococcal antigen, mycobacterial and fungal isolators, all those are recommended. Keep in mind that there's several cutaneous manifestations of HIV such as uh, pearly papules with the central umbilication and that gives you a clue of molluscum contagiosum red purple non-blanching nodular lesions which is Kaposi's sarcoma and friable vascular papules such as bacillary angiomatosis due to Bardanella hence the eye ophthalmic complications include CMV retinitis where the CD4 count drops less than 50 and the treatment is gangcyclovir. For oral, you have aphthous ulcers or thrush from oral candidiasis or hairy leukoplakia um, that's caused by EBV, but again, it's not precancerous. And Kaposi's sarcoma is another one. Also, cardiac lesions can include increased risk of an MI. And with pulmonary complications, we mentioned PCP, tuberculosis, um, and again, all these can be detected by the chest x-ray. And for CD4 count less than 200 and patients who have PCP, uh, TMP SMX 2 tabs um, along with a PAO2 of 70 um, is recommended. And if the PAO2 is less than 70, then prednisone definitely helps the patient um, along with TMP SMX IV. So that was an overview of some of the high yield points you'll see on HIV in terms of the diagnosis and the treatments for the Comlex and USMLE board exam. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures and good luck in your preparations for the boards.